Hi everybody, Shelley Tillman with our next discussion post, this time talking about the Congregationalists. I first came across the Congregationalists when I was studying the War of 1812. Um, the first time that I encountered that term was reading about the different approaches from American churches, both for and against the war. Um, and it was interesting to me because Congregationalist was not a denomination that I was familiar with. Being a lifelong Christian, I was surprised that there was a denomination of the Christian religion that I was not familiar with nor had ever heard of. Um, and after I started doing some research, I discovered um, that Congregationalists actually trace their origins back to England, um, where they were part of a diverse effort made up of many different denominations um, trying to reform the Church of England. Here in North America, originally, the Congregationalists had um, Puritan roots, and uh, they were kind of made up of a variety of independent Christian denominations. Then in 1648, um, the ministers um, met to sign the Cambridge Platform, and that document laid out standards, um, and it kind of made the denomination of Congregationalists more uniform. Later, um, up more towards the American Revolution, and then right after, um, North America was experiencing a population boom. But what's interesting about that is that Congress Congregationalists were actually the only denomination that did not also follow that same pattern um, and in fact decreased. Um, and part of that actually could have been because the Congregationalists experienced a split um, and when they, when they had this split, um, it was really around uh, foundational beliefs. Um, some believing that um, they wanted the religion, the denomination to be more in keeping with the um, ideas coming out of the age of reason. Um, some wanted to be more closely connected with government and politics, and others wanted to move further away from those things. Um, so it caused a split in 1825. At one time in the early 20th century, um, one of the goals of the Congregationalist denomination was to um, unite the different denominations under the umbrella of the Protestant religion. However, that fell apart and um, the group splintered so that you now have conservative Congressional Christian Conference and the General Association of Congressional Christian Tur Churches, excuse me. And those two have um, have branched out and actually are still in existence today. Um, and it's interesting because they both kind of approach um, their outreach, their evangelical efforts in different ways. Today, there are two um, primary organizations under the Congregationalist umbrella. Uh, one of those is the Conservative Congregational Christian Conference um, that on their website they address what their um, what their organization believes in, which would be the autonomy of the the churches under their umbrella. Um, in their about us section of their website, they don't actually mention the the split that occurred um, and why that split took place. Um, the General Association of Congressional Churches, Christian Churches, on the other hand, their website specifically addresses the, the break between the two groups. Um, and what they claim is 
those who were against the merger, and that would be the merger of the different denominations under the Protestant umbrella, um, feared that the merger would establish a church hierarchy and that their church would lose its independence and its ability to self-govern. Um, they also make claim to the 400-year history of the Congregationalist denomination. Um, so I found that really interesting because the, the second, the General Association of Congressional Christian Conference, they specifically make an effort to tie to their past, um, whereas the other organization does not. So I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about the Congregationalists, because I did, and now I know what they stand for.